Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome to Fallout 4 Far Harbor, of course, the next DLC pack for Fallout 4, and what some might call, like, the first big traditional DLC pack, because Automatron was, of course, mainly in existing areas with just a few extra dungeons, though I guess you could kind of say the same was true for Broken Steel in Fallout 3, if you like, and we've been promised the biggest new land mass that Bethesda have ever put in DLC. I'm assuming they're including Skyrim in that, which would uh, make this quite big indeed. So, let's go and join up to that, because... Screw the railroad for a moment, don't care. Instead, Far From Home has appeared in my quest log. This is Ellie Perkins from Valentine's Detective Agency, with a message for Nick's partner. We've got a new case and it sounds urgent. Stop by the office. I'll be waiting. Now we're going on a long journey, so we're going to need some preparations. But first, an introduction in case you're new to this and just found this video because you're looking for stuff about Far Harbor. This is Bacon. This is the character we play as. The thing about her is she is melee only. She does not use guns. So we're going to be learning a lot about the melee weapons of Far Harbor. But don't worry, I'll find a way to show you some of the guns as well. I have a plan in mind for that too. Um, I've cleared out a lot of carry weight. Like, I've kind of uh, stored some of the weapons, which, well, cool, I wasn't using very much, just so I've got like 175 spare weight capacity for while I'm out there, which I think should be very, very welcome indeed. Why is there just a staircase over there? Probably for doing the wiring on the roof of my extremely brightly lit up house. Yes, that would make sense. Uh, yes, indeed, I've cleared out a whole bunch of weight capacity, so I've got like 175 weight spare. This girl has a lot of weight capacity, by the way. She has a very, very high strength on account of all the meleeing. And if we're going off to pastures fresh, Obviously, I would say we should be bringing along our power armor, our ridiculously good power armor. In fact, I think it's, is it all maxed now? Uh, yep, I think I've moved it all over to uh, the kind of class F. Perfect. So in we go. I won't be using this by default, but I would like to have it out in Far Harbor with me, just in case I do actually need some power armor. It's a beautiful old girl, by the way. Yeah, basically, it's mostly X1, but I've mixed in the T60 Tesla armor from Automatron and improved all of it to uh, the maximum it can really get to. The reason is because, obviously, a few melee weapons do actually have uh, bonus energy damage, so this further increases that. But we've got kind of the usual old girls. We've got the Rockville Slugger, Vatston Hats Baseball Bat. We've got Furious Super Sledge. We've got General Chow's Revenge. Pikmin's Blade, which I still rate. I think on certain occasions that can be very, very useful. Uh, Plasma Infused Shredding Minigun, of course. Purely set to, uh, oh, flip. Okay, and wait for it. Go, 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 go. Beautiful. Plasma Infused Shredding Minigun, purely for the shredding effect, of course. And the Extended Ripper, which I've been very much enjoying as well. Anyway, let's go meet up with Valentine. But first, a note for my subscribers too. Yes, we are doing our first playthrough of Far Harbor with Bacon and the No Guns Run, not, in fact, with Grills Bears on Survival Difficulty, so we're playing on very hard at the moment. I did put that to a vote. The result was pretty clear. I think Bacon won by, like, more than 2,000 votes in the end thereabouts, so it was a pretty clear picture in the end there. You will get to see Grills Bears take this on. I think I agree with the public consensus that I would prefer to be able to explore this DLC in full and I can definitely do that better as Bacon. Now, before we even start the DLC, however, new stuff has been added by Far Harbor that a few people seem to have missed immediately. And that is that a few perks have gained some new higher levels to them, rather helping out higher level characters. Now, the ones that I've identified so far are Strong Back has gained a fifth rank. So previously, it was just when Over Encumbered you could fast travel at its highest rank. Its highest rank now at level 40 is when Over Encumbered running costs 50% less action points. Very, very nice indeed. Lone Wanderer, already ridiculously powerful, has gained a fourth rank, which I find quite frankly amazing, which is now, without a companion, you have 25 more action points. Very, very welcome indeed. Action Boy and Action Girls picked up a third rank. So now action points regenerate a further 25% faster. Again, most welcome. Critical Banker, which was already hilariously powerful, has actually got even more so. Obviously up from three. You can now indeed go up to four critical hits stored. And finally, Scrapper has picked up a third rank as well. Previously, of course, it was just rare components like circuitry and nuclear materials. There is now a third rank of Scrapper at level 40. You just get more from salvaging. So basically, yes, the amount of materials goes up. Though... To be honest, by the time you're level 40, there's probably an excellent chance you're getting everything you need to out of anything you're scrapping anyway. So all of that becomes available immediately. We don't even need to step into the DLC to get it. Let's go and meet up with Nick. We got a new case while you and Nick were out. 
Ready to put on the detective hat? Absolutely. The only thing I'm ready for is danger and awesome. That's the most bacon answer imaginable. The client is a fisherman who lives on the edge of the Commonwealth, Kenji Nakano. Nakano? Huh. That name takes me back. Hmm. My memory's a little fuzzy on the details, though. Maybe if you bothered writing things down, Nick. Can't do that. Wouldn't want to put you out of a job. Huh. I'll remember that the next time you need me to console a hysterical client. Mr. Nakano didn't leave many details. Said he'd go over everything when you meet him. But if you want my guess, missing person case. Guy had a worried look a mile long. So is the fedora and trench coat mandatory when solving these cases? Because I'm thinking smoking pipe and British accent. Hey, whatever floats your boat, gumshoe. The Nakano residence is up in the northeast, near the coast. A small fishing house. He said that he and his wife will be waiting for you. It's a long walk. <laughs> That's how the hard cases always start. I'm increasingly glad that I'm doing this in Very Hard Not Survival, because I can just fast travel there. So yep, it's right up here in the northeast corner. If you've already been to uh, the macro fish packing plant, and there's a good chance if you've built your first set of power armor, you would have done, because that's an excellent source of aluminium. It is extremely close by. Uh, but be careful, my alert queen sometimes patrols in this sort of an area. Also, I find it rather cute that if you're sarcastic about the trench coat and fedora, Nick Valentine dislikes that. He takes the whole thing very seriously. Oh, this is nice. There's going to be a ghoul ambush coming out of the water here. Hello. Go on, get up. Up with you. Bye. Meanwhile, my old favourite friend is back again. Another glowing one just trapped on an island, but unfortunately they can't swim, so he can never get to you. Thanks to Demo Expert 2, though, I can get to him. Have one of these. There you go. Beautiful. Right, this looks like the guy here, right in the northeast corner of the map with a lovely big old fishing boat, too. Damn it. Come in. I know you're listening on the other end. Where is she? Where is my daughter? Kenji, please. You've been at this for hours. Stop. You need sleep. She's out there, Ray. Someone has her. They could be raiders, or gunners, or God knows what else. What? Who are you? I'm sorry, but we don't have time for visitors or caravans or wherever you're from. And I'm all sarcastic. I, I basically, I'm sarcastic for every speech check, just so you know. Sorry. I have this habit of running straight towards signs of trouble. Come to think of it, that explains a lot. A good Samaritan? Fine. I'm out of options anyway, if you want to hear about it. My daughter is missing. It all started with this damn radio. Our daughter Kasumi likes to fix things. The radio was her latest project. Until she made contact with some kidnapper who lured her away from us. Or maybe she left on her own. She's not a child anymore. Our daughter is 19. She knows how to survive and she's capable. I... think maybe she left because she wanted her own life. No. She would have told us where she was going. She would have said something. I know my daughter is in danger. I can feel it. Find her, please. This is feeling more and more similar to, yeah, the setup for Point Lookout in Fallout 3. The fact the daughter may well have just gone to go and find her own life, because that's exactly what the girl in Fallout 3 did. She just wanted to go find adventure, and I'll totally find her. Although, actually, no, any leads by any chance. Do you have any idea where she could have gone? We know she took one of the boats, but that's all. She could be anywhere. Her room is upstairs, if that helps. And if you had any more questions about her, just ask. All right, well, this seems like a good thing to do. We're going proper detective here. We need to speak to them, search room. Though I'm guessing in her room, there's going to be something really obvious and easy that explains immediately that she has indeed gone to Far Harbor, that you just haven't found somehow, but never mind. Right, you, the mother. I'd like to know more about Kasumi. I'd shine a light on where she's gone. My daughter is strong, focused, careful. That's how I know she's still alive. But why would she leave without telling us? Maybe we... No, never mind. I don't want to waste your time. No, no, no. Let's speech check this. Though, hang on, hang on. Just a sec, just a sec. Let me just step out of the power armor. Tell me what's wrong. Every detail is important, Mrs. Nakano. Don't hold back. No, it's nothing. Damn it. Oh, well, never mind. In all fairness, like, speech checks never really give you much fresh information. They just give you a bit of, like, flavor text. You and your husband don't seem to agree about why your daughter left. <sighs> we both want to find her. 
The world out there isn't a place where you want to be alone. But Kenji still sees her swaddled in diapers. He doesn't see a young woman with her own decisions to make. Maybe because it's more frightening. She wasn't tricked into leaving without telling us. That was her choice. She didn't want us to follow. Why? Well, we know there's the Children of Atom and Synths involved. She may have been attracted to the Children of Atom cult. Might have been embarrassing. She thought her parents wouldn't understand. Tell me about this radio your daughter was working on. I remember Kasumi was very excited about it. I figured she was secretly trying to make contact with Diamond City or another settlement. We're pretty isolated out here. She only has us for company and Kenji can be... Overprotective. To be honest, there are actually, you know, literally flesh-eating feral zombies just round the coast, like two minutes walk. However protective he is, it's probably about the right amount. She's my little girl, and she doesn't know how dangerous this world is. I never should have let her grandfather teach her how to fix these machines. A grandfather, you say? Her grandfather? He taught her how to fix the radio? Ever since she was old enough to walk, yes. Her grandfather had an ear for machines. Kasumi picked up the knack. He passed away recently. He used to scavenge the ruins in the south for parts. I kept telling him he was getting too old. No follow-up question about the ruins in the south, unfortunately, so we can't go there for more clues. Fine. Tell you what, they've actually got quite a nice house here. Bit, you know, old world and broken, but, you know, everything is. But they've actually got a nice little bathroom, view over the sea, closed door. They don't have, like, a little outhouse like many houses do. Separate bedrooms. I'm guessing this will be her room because it's full of machines. And they said she was good at fixing stuff. And of course, straight away, left right on the edge, a little kind of radio project tape. Fine. See what she had to say there. Project log. Radio. Correction. Working. Radio. I'll finally get some news outside this house. My handle is going to be... Let's go with... Ohm's Law. That should confuse the creeps. And if someone actually gets the reference, then we'll at least have circuitry in common. Okay, so she's got the radio working and then hidden around the back here. Though, um, first, in her bedside cabinet, uh, she had handcuffs. Probably not something to mention to her father there. Right, second tape. Project log, dreams. Recording what I can remember when I wake up. I keep having the same one. I'm in a white room. People are talking about me like I'm not there, or maybe they just don't care. And then there's this, I don't know, jolt, like a spark of electricity to the back of my head, and then everyone turns to look at me. God, I hope I don't have it again tonight. White room spark of electricity, I get the feeling that will actually happen to her in that case. And finally, a journal around the back of this here toolbox. Sumi's journal radio project update range on this thing is just terrible. Nothing but static and the occasional crazy thinking that the machine is talking to me. Ugh, I'm going to work on boosting the bandwidth coverage. There's a lot of electronics left in Grandad's boathouse. Okay, check the boathouse next. With all the nautical navigation tech he was tinkering with, I bet I could find something that can pick up frequencies from further out. Now, where did I leave my key to the safe? Okay, so boathouse and the safe there. Got it. All right, out in the boathouse, brightly lit up room around here. What else have we got? Grandfather's note. This is good. My dear Kasumi, if you ever get locked out of the safe, the answer is here in the boathouse. Picture where the key is. All right, a picture. It'll be behind a picture frame, but I may be able to just do this myself. No, no, I can't. And here we are, a picture frame. Perfect. And you find a key hidden within the frame. Lovely. Honestly, to my mind, keeping things in a safe and then putting the key to the safe in the same room away from where anyone will actually see it and then also leaving a note on top of the safe, giving a clear clue where the key is, kind of defeats the object of having a safe, but never mind. And this gives me Kasumi's final holotape together. Ah, oh, military grade duct tape. Screw your daughter, I've got the military grade duct tape. Bye. Project log? Um, myself. I never really thought about who or what I am, but... God. Where do I start? The radio. I was right about the range. I managed to get a signal, a strong signal, from up north. There's a group of people up there. They say they're all synths. Synthetic people. Made by the Institute. They are trying to build a place for their kind. Where they can be themselves and be accepted for 
what they are alongside human beings. It sounds wonderful, but then they started asking about me and some questions came up. Questions I don't have answers to. I mean, I've always felt off, like I'm not really supposed to be here, but then there are things in my childhood I can't remember, and I've been having strange dreams. I... I'm going to go to meet these synths. I... I have to know the truth about myself. They've told me to sail up north to a town called Far Harbor. I can make my way to them from there. Alright, she feared she might be a synth. Now, this is very, very interesting. Like, I genuinely love that synths are such a big part of the story in Fallout 4 because they're fascinating. The idea that anyone could be a synth and maybe they are, maybe they're not. Like, when I was doing the, um, the quest, Human Error, in my survival mode playthrough, like, genuinely, I assumed everyone in that town was synths because it made sense to me and I started being suspicious of them because I thought they all were, but they weren't. They were quite the opposite. They, they hated synths and wanted to trap them, but I got completely the wrong idea and now... We've got the other, rather than me being suspicious other people are synths, this girl suspicious she might be a synth. A kind of niggling existential self-doubt that caused her to flee. That's fascinating. All right, good, I like the setup. First things first, is Kasumi human? I need to ask you an important question. Are you sure your daughter's human? What kind of question is that? Why are you asking? Because there's synths involved. Your daughter made contact with a group of synths. She thinks she's one of them. What? That's... that's crazy. She's not a synth. She's our daughter. We raised her. I... I gave birth to her. She's flesh and blood, not a synthetic. Yes, but she could have been replaced. She could have been replaced. It's not impossible. Are you sure she's human, Mrs. Nakano? Yes. I know my daughter and she hasn't changed. She's not some replacement. This is what I was afraid of. Someone twisting my daughter's mind. Did you find where Kasumi went, detective? Indeed. Far Harbor. I think I know where Kasumi went. A place called Far Harbor? She went that far up north? God, that explains why she took the boat. You have to go after her. Please, take my other ship on the dock outside. My father's design. It has a guidance system, and it is built for distance. What can I expect out there, Kenji? I only made the trip to Far Harbor once, when I was a boy. All I remember is that my father did not want to stay long. Something about the air being bad. And I'm guessing you're going to want to come with me to help search for your daughter now we know where she is. No, you just want to stand here and let me do it. All right, lovely. A magic boat ride? Will there be sea monsters? Uh, while I know the seas aren't exactly safe, I am confident that boat can get you there unharmed. At least I hope. I know you haven't asked for payment, and we can't offer much, but here, please take it. I insist. For expenses, if nothing else. 300 bottle caps. That's all right a bit. So, travel to Far Harbor. Tell the Institute about the Synth Refuge. Oh, hang on. Alternative little questings I could do before I even went. So I could tell either the Institute or the Railroad about the Synth Refuge. Well, okay, this is interesting. You know what? Before we go, why not? I'm going to go tell the railroad about the Synth Refuge because uh, this is indeed a railroad run through. And this here is one of the advantages of doing this in very hard not survival. I can nip back here and have a word with, mysteriously, you. Hey there. You. The, the heck is Boxer? Name's Boxer. Boss called me in on account of some rumors making their way through the Commonwealth. There's word that there's some kind of colony of synths way up the coast. All on their own. You heard anything like that? I have, and I've had it confirmed. Yeah, there's a girl named Kasumi Nakano. She disappeared up north. Sounds like she heard the same stories and thinks she's a synth. The name doesn't ring a bell. If she is a synth, doesn't sound like we ever helped her. But I guess those stories really are getting around, huh? I'm gonna keep my ear to the ground. You do the same. If you get anything concrete, let me know, okay? Okay, so we've got this woman here, and presumably we have to check in with her after we're done. Alright, fine. So, bright new day back at the uh, Nakano house here. Very nice house indeed, actually. Very, very lovely. 
and on this beautiful old boat. I do quite like this old equipment here. This is very, very nice. It's time to be on our way off to Far Harbour and presumably get our advice and warnings about the DLC. Yes, travel to Far Harbour. Oh my goodness, no warnings about minimum level or anything. Marvellous. So long, Commonwealth. Be back soon. And here we arrive at a place where we were warned the air is bad. We know, of course, from the trailers there's something about a mysterious mist that can get you turned around here. So possibly this area is kind of permanently in a state of shadow and night. Welcome to Far Harbour. We got ourselves a big old town to start off with. And a wibbly wizzy thing as well. And we're being greeted by people with guns. Walk in the park. Talk to the welcome party. That really deserves some, uh, yeah, that really deserves some inverted commas there. Hello. Are you lost? This is Far Harbor. We, we don't get many visitors around here. We don't need no freeloaders or more help, mainlander. So you can get back in your boat and leave. Alan, this isn't your dock. It belongs to the whole town. And that means strangers are welcome. Uh, sorry, you've caught us during a, a difficult time. Uh, but Alan's got a point. Not all visitors have good intentions. So, uh, what's your business here? Right, let's be totally, totally honest. We don't need to talk about the synth refuge just yet. We don't know what their opinions on synths are, so let's uh, leave that. It might be a sensitive topic. Instead, I'm just looking for Kasumi. A young woman from the Commonwealth named Kasumi may have passed through here family hired me to find her. Some sort of detective, huh? Well, she came through here all right. Damn it. Mariners incoming. Something's coming through the fog! You, help us defend the town and I'll answer any questions you have. Take a post at the top of the wall near the main gate. The hall never lets us down. Now follow me! I'm not really a top of the wall kind of person. I'm more of a on the front line with a massive sledgehammer kind of guy. Where do, where do I go if I'm more of that kind of guy? So what have we got coming in past all these lovely little wibbly things? Eyes peeled, you say? We're going to get our first taste of the new enemies here. There's no time. Look to the fog. They're coming. Go first. Gulpers. Actually, no, if you're going to be down there, I'm going to be down here too. I'm good at being down here too. Hello, have a grenade. There you go. And have another one. Legend. Oh, we've got gulpers and legendaries straight away. Hello, and more for you. So, what have we got here? Young gulper, legendary gulper. Fine, focus on the... No, not you. Focus on the legendary. We'll take him down for them. And he's going to go down in a few hits. Okay. Not too bad, all things considered. He went down pretty easy. So I can handle these. I'm level 40, and I think I can handle these. All right. Ow! What the... Will you stop throwing things at me? And it is... Ah! More gulpers. Hello. Rockville Sluggers. Yep, Rockville Slugger, I'd say. And more legend... Oh, <laughs> what are you? You're legend... You're level 22. That's not too bad. Go on to the Rockville Slugger here. And we can take you out nice and easy. They're throwing Molotovs in. That's fine. I'm pretty much fire resistant at this point. And what else have we got? Anything else? Nope. These guys seem alright, to be honest. Not too difficult at all. Now, what have you just dropped? Unyielding leather left arm. Plus three to... Oh, stats when 25 health or less. I'm not sure I've ever seen unyielding before. That's not new, is it? Also, gulper innards. I'll take some of that just in case that's important. And there was another legendary round here. You're an angler, so we've seen gulpers who appear to be like big, I don't know, gecko frog things. And anglers that are big, well, anglerfish but above ground. We'll take the meat as well. And we also got a rad-powered combat armor left arm. Grants additional strength the higher... Now that's definitely new. Alright, so we've got new legendary effects added. I'm not sure if I deliberately got two legendary drops to introduce those right in this first fight. But, uh, grants additional strength the higher your rads. Like, in, in Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas, this would be the sort of thing that would make me say, you know what, screw it, I'm just going to start having my rads at 800. But in this, when high rads basically mean you've screwed over your action points, it's not really worth it, so... I, I can't see that ever being worth doing. And the award for the most ironically named NPC award goes to this guy labelled only as Survivor. Beautiful. Now, you, what have you got to say? And now you see what we're up against. The fog and the creatures it spits out have taken the whole island from my people. 
for your help when we needed it. You deserve this. Alright, another 300 odd bottle caps. Beautiful. So tell me about this fog. What's the fog? Where to begin? The fog's radioactive, right? But there are pockets of it, the deep fog, that are hard fallout. And as deadly as that is, that's only part of the problem. Things live in the fog, thrive. You think what attacked the harbor's bad? Oh, there's far worse further inland. Okay, interesting. And lost your island question mark. I don't even know what that's supposed to bloody mean. Lost the whole island? Oh, the fog's been here forever. There are good years when it recedes and the island's almost normal. Then there are times when it spreads all over. People have to cling to any patch of land free of the fog. For the past, oh, eight years or so, it's been getting as bad as it's ever been. Now, Far Harbor's one of the only places left that's safe. Why do we get the feeling that the Children of Atom are intentionally creating the fog to reclaim this island for the glory of radiation or what have you? If you manage to survive despite all that, you must be tough. <laughs> Ornery, more like. I just... I'm done cowering behind your damn hull, Avery. Time you let me deal with the real problem. With the right people and my guns, I can end those Children of Atom cultists for good. The fog's been here forever. The children didn't make it. Before the rat eaters came, the fog was under control. They come, and it all goes wrong. It's time we do something. No need to burden a stranger with all this nonsense. Yeah, sorry, I just came up with that nonsense theory myself too. Sorry about that. And the fog is worse. Back to business. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the children of Atom, because there's not really much about them lore-wise in the base game of Fallout 4. What's the deal with the children of Atom? They're religious folk. Worship the power of Adam, which is radiation, I guess. If you want details, you'd have to find and ask them. We used to have a peace with them until a certain hothead menace named Alan Lee. Now that's enough. That preacher came into the harbor saying that it was Adam's will that we lost our land. That it was Adam's goddamn will that we lost so many friends and family. And that the Adam would wipe this whole place clean of us. If it were up to me, you'd hang for what you did to that preacher, Alan. Oh dear, and what did happen to him? What did he do to the preacher? Alan pulled a gun on him. He claims the preacher reached for his. We don't have police, or really any law. Just custom and popular sentiment. And after everything the preacher said, it was abundantly clear doing anything to Alan would have made matters worse. Okay, so the fog's getting worse. Have the children made the fog worse? Absolutely not. There's not one bit of evidence. Geiger counters don't lie, Avery. The fog's gotten more lethal year over year. And now the fog's covering the whole island. But only after the children came. You know as well as I do, that's happened before. Sure, people have theories the children are involved, but no one, and I mean no one, has proof. I don't know. There's this guy called Chekhov, and I've heard he's got this gun that proves a lot of stuff in this sort of thing. Anyway, back to business. Can we get back to business? Sorry for all that. You're here for Kasumi, right? She headed inland to the Synth Refuge. Acadia. Getting there will be dangerous. You'll need a guide. Old Longfellow. No one knows the fog like him. But, uh, word of warning, he's a bit of an acquired taste. Right. You seem very kind of calm and relaxed about the presence of a Synth Refuge on your island. Most people would be a bit more freaked out for that. What can you tell me about Acadia? Ask Longfellow. He's the only one that's been there. Also, did they intentionally misspell Arcadia? Because I would have thought that's what they were going for, but never mind. Alright, so, here we are in the town of Far Harbour. Let's have a little look-see at our map, by the way, because we've got a new one. So this here is our map, living on the edge, meet the citizens. So help the citizens of Far Harbour and help the Mariner and Cassie Dalton. So we've got the Commonwealth. Can I just... Oh! I can just fast travel back there anytime I want. That's interesting. That's very different to how uh, DLC really worked in Fallout 3. And then we've got like loads of islands down here. Kind of loads of water and speckled islands. I'm guessing over here we're getting into very dangerous territory. Lots of water too. There's probably some good stuff hidden around in the water. So yeah, I'm going to be curious. Can I just literally just go back to the Commonwealth anytime I want? Yep, I can just fast travel to and from. 
Wow, okay, that is very, very different to how DLC traditionally works. And then Far Harbor shows up as a fast travel location just off the coast uh, in the northeast corner of the map. So let's have an explore about here. By explore, I mean loot. Actually, you know what? We don't need to loot. There's no actual point in looting because I don't even know if there's a flipping like settlement or workbench or whatever that I can deal with. And these things, I'm guessing, are the anti-fog barriers. Because I can see right now no rads. And now some very, very low level rads, though I'm protected by my power armor. I'm not going to take my power armor with me, by the way. I'm going to leave it in town here when I find a safe place for it. And then I'll come back for it if I happen to need it. So this here's Avery's house. Got it. Over here. What else have we got? One shop manned by Brooks. So any new weapons that show up immediately? Yes, we do. One harpoon gun. Interesting. Ah, but more interestingly, one meat hook. Now that's new. I'll have one of them. Thank you. Oh, and one pole hook. That's even more interesting. That's actually for completely unupgraded. 245 is not that bad. Yep, take one of them, please. A lever action rifle we're aware of. There, I'll come back and visit that with a better gun character later. Uh, but yes, that looks like that. Okay, that ooh, uses uh, a relatively rare ammo type there. And for people with more money than sense, you can get yourself plus one agility and plus one perception for this recon marine helmet, which while I admit sounds badass and comes with some decent damage resistance, I would not recommend giving up a ballistic weave uh, hat slot for that helmet. It's not worth it. Right now, I am wearing an armoured battle fedora that gives me 65-65. That thing is, yeah, 21, 21, and 10. Plus one agility is nice, but it's not worth sacrificing 40 points of damage resistance for. New food, though. Wolf ribs. wonder if that means we're going to be running into wolves out there. Presumably so. Small accuracy bonus and night vision in exteriors for five minutes. Night vision, very nice. Now, this is an interesting one. Gulper slurry, invisible for 10 seconds. An extremely brief stealth boy thing. This is interesting. Guy at the back of the shop just lying there. Everywhere. It's coming. Oh. Guy called Andre just terrified in the bed. Who's Andre? Poor Andre is my patient over there. He spent too long a spell in the fall. You may think you know your mainland radiation poisoning, but we got our own special brand here. Okay, can I help? I know a few things about medicine. Can I try to help him? You say, what? You? Help? Well, poor Andre's got it bad. Good as dead. Well, I suppose there's no harm letting you have a poke. I've never taken a single rank of medic. I've no idea what I'm doing. So, intelligence 8 or medic 2 requires- Oh my goodness, skill checks. <gasps> Use the mysterious serum! <laughs> And, oh, severe radiation exposure. Yeah, I've got mysterious serum on me. That would actually work, because that's a massive reduction in rads. That's a really good idea. You inject the mysterious serum into Andre and his breathing rapidly stabilizes. He looks almost instantly better. There you go. You better appreciate that. I've literally got a finite supply of this stuff. In fact, I think I've got almost none left, because I, uh, I finished that quest wrong, so I can't get more. Yeah, I'm down to only three doses. That was one of my only four doses. Well, I'd say I've done the right thing there. Perfect. Now, Alan, you are the gun salesman, Alan. I'm guessing. This is interesting. He's got a legendary instigating uh, harpoon launcher. So even though I've, like, got... I'm not sure what this counts as. Presumably this is a big gun. Uh, even though I've taken no ranks in it, it's 187, or doubled up to, what would that be, 374? 374 damage. If targets at full health, that's damn powerful. And he's brought me bear traps. A rather interesting, unique type of mine. Okay, a bit heavy mind. And I'll gladly buy an electrified Chinese officer sword off him, because I can actually attach that to General Chow's revenge, because I haven't actually done that yet, I don't think. No, I didn't. Okay, good, I'll have that off him. And a brand new sort of gun. Does some normal ballistic damage, but also does some rad damage on top. Interesting. And here we are. A VATS enhanced version of the pole hook. Yep, I'll trade mine out for that. Now, let's look at these new weapons I just picked up. In particular, one, let's get the electrified blade off this thing. Oh, darn, my mistake. I thought that was an electrified serrated blade, but it was not. It was just an electrified blade. Oh, well, my mistake. So, one meat hook can have <laughs> extra hooks. Good old extra hooks chance to disarm. Better damage. Not too bad, but to be honest... 112? 
I can't justify 100 and flipping 12. Like, I can easily do, like, double that. Chance of disarm is nice, but it's not good enough to use. The fish catcher, however. Oh, what the bloody hell. 402 damage slow? That's actually pretty bloody amazing, actually. That's really good, especially Vaxed Enhanced. That's possibly one of the most powerful weapons I've actually got. Like, I've got a Furious Super Sledge, and that upgraded is only doing about the same amount of damage. That's crazy. That's... Yeah, okay, right. We need to gather the materials to get the Fish Catcher upgraded, because that's actually going to be my go-to weapon. Because I'd like to use the DLC weaponry in the DLC. That'd be a fun thing to do. So to do that, I'm going to need a tiny bit more steel, one oil, but mainly a fair bit of aluminium. Got it. And obviously he's selling nothing with aluminium in it. Well, all right, fine. You know what? I've got a solution to this. So I've just nipped back to Sanctuary Hills, because this DLC just lets you do that. So there we are. The fish catcher. Puncturing. Beautiful. And of course, I've just realised where the large meat hook is not very powerful or doesn't look it. It's because it's an unarmed weapon, not a melee. Got it. Which would explain why it's still pretty darn strong, all things considered, because I've got such ridiculously high strength. And I do mean ridiculously high. Like, when I'm not wearing power armour, my strength is defaulted up to 14. Uh, but yes, that makes perfect sense. All right, back to Far Harbour. Now, let's catch up with these couple of people who want to have a word. The Mariner. In order to do proper repairs, I need tools. Specialized tools. And they won't be easy to come by. 450 caps if you can, though. Okay, that seems reasonable. I'll gladly do whatever that is. Sign me up. I'll help. Eagle's Cove Tannery. Tools are certain to be there. Now get. Okay, so, hull breach. Get some power tools. So that will take me to, yeah, the northwest of the islands. I'm over on the northeast at the moment. Fine. Next we had Cassie. I watched the island tear down the greatest family that ever set foot in Far Harbor. It's a tale of greed, blood, and vengeance. Ooh, this is interesting. Sounds interesting. I'd, I'd like to hear it. I thought you might say that. My family, the Daltons, was the pride of Far Harbor for generations. Even back before the war. It was lumber and fishing that made the Daltons rich. But they got greedy. Took too much from the island. The island's been getting revenge ever since. Killing us off one by one. I'm the last Dalton still standing. Ah, but now our story takes an unexpected turn. A mysterious stranger comes to Far Harbor. Someone strong, someone capable. With the stranger's help, the last living Dalton finally has a chance to avenge her bloodline once and for all. Okay. I get it. I'm the stranger and you need my help. Fine, but you better make this worth my time. Don't worry about that. One thing a Dalton's never been is poor. Now, on to the first chapter in our tale of vengeance. That would be the sad story of freckle-faced Petey. Petey was my cousin. He was a good lad, never caused trouble. He thought all those freckles brought him luck, but, <laughs> well, not so much. He was out foraging at the National Park campground when the island sick some feral ghouls on him. Island's a sneaky bastard when it wants to be. Anyway, he made it back to town, but died from his injuries that night. Of course, those ferals are still out there. Waiting to kill the next poor fool who comes along. Damn shame. Okay. So basically, the island and various parts of its inhabitants killed members of her family, and she wants me to take them out one by one. Got it. Those ghouls are as good as dead. Good, good. It's long past time those shamblers paid for what they did to Petey. So, map updated Blood Tide. Good name for a quest. And that one is much closer. National Park Campground, pretty close by over here. Though, admittedly, I'm immediately curious. There's just this island to the north, like, really close by to where we started. You know what? Don't get distracted by that. Oh, hello. Oh, this is cool. 
You've actually got, for no well explained reason, you're keeping a Maya Lurk, what appears to be alive, but over a heater. Like, and the bubbles suggest it's boiling. Is this like a, a lobster being boiled? Is this how you cook? Is this where food from the island comes from? You catch a Maya Lurk whole somehow, slap it in here and boil it like a lobster. Ah, very interesting. Right, okay, let's go and chat to that other bloke. So if you're on survival mode, yep, you can rent your first room upstairs in the pub. Marvellous. Okay, I've grabbed a room because that'll be a safe place to storm a power armor. Make sure no one hops in it. All right, Bertha, I'll be back later if I need you. Now, you, old Longfellow. Captain Avery said you can get me to Acadia? I'm done leading people to their deaths in the farm. Last fella couldn't keep up in the last five minutes. Some parents are worried about their runaway daughter. She went to Acadia and I need to find her. If someone's headed for Acadia, there's always a story. Yours worth dying over, huh? Eh, yeah, sure, why not? Trust me, I've done a whole lot more for a whole lot less. If that's the way you choose to live, that's your affair. Listen, if you're dead set on this foolishness, get me a bottle of whiskey from the bartender, Mitch. Until then, we're done. Fine by me, whiskey's actually pretty cheap, isn't it? One bottle of whiskey for 15? Easy. Though interestingly, he's also sitting next to Islander's Almanac. So you've unlocked points of interest map markers across the island. Nice, that's very useful. So what does that let me see? Uh, Oceanarium, ooh, that's cool. Cliff Edge Hotel, uh, Cinema, and we've got ourselves over here, uh, Echo Lake Lumber, then Rayburn Point, whatever that is. I kind of want to go to the Oceanarium. Whatever's evolved out of that, I want to see it. Southwest Harbor, a Cranberry Island Bog. Hi. You got my whiskey yet? Yeah, here you are. Here you go. Ah, now you're tough. So, go with you, who's kind of my temporary companion by the looks of it. And off he runs. You might want to take this rope. Taste foul sin. But it'll help. Myalurk jerky, alright. Poison resistance. That's interesting. So am I taking poison damage as well as rat damage? Huh. Intriguing. Sure, I'll just eat that now. Why not? Take hit of Rad X2, I've got plenty of it. When the bullets start flying, find cover. Keep your head down if you want. Not really my way, to be honest. Got one trapper up ahead. Level 8? I'm level 40, I think I can handle it. That looks like a man, to be honest. Yeah. A human, someone gone mad out in the fog by any chance. And forward, forward, forward. You are a scrounging trapper. You're going to go down. Together with one swing from my mighty, mighty fish catcher. And next up, there was totally another one. There was to I saw you over here. Ow, what the heck was that? Someone hit me with something very, very strong there, and I don't know what it was. And we've got someone upstairs as well. I might need to loop around to get you. How do I get up top to you? Aha, ramp over here. Perfect. Ow, you get, you just hit me again. What do you have? Ah, that'll be the harpoon launcher then. Um, uh, don't get hit by that. That thing is harsh. The honestly for a DLC that was flagged as high level DLC, I'm level 40 and the game's currently throwing between level eights and 22s at me. So I feel like we're in control for the moment at least. So this area is a nightmare on survival, thanks. You're having to be constantly taking things like Radex, so water will get into very short supply very, very quickly. All right, lobster trap helmet and coastal armor. Let's see how the local gear is. Lobster trap helmet, five damage resistance, not very good. Coastal armor, eh, not bad if you happen to come here as a very low level character, but otherwise definitely not worth it. Uh, would you mind just waiting for a second? I picked up a whole bunch of meat here. I'd like to double check what I can cook with it. Poached Angler, plus 15 action points and reduced full damage for 20 minutes. All right. Yep, take some of that. And there's definitely going to be wolf somewhere around here because I need wolf to make wolf ribs. The gulper in it, meanwhile, I used to make gulper slurry, but you're going to need one crystal, one acid, and three gulper in this together with some purified water to make that. Well, that is an intriguing combination. Just drink down some acid, crystal, and intestine stew. Delicious. Right, let's be on our way. Interesting he was talking about the fog getting you turned around. I mean, I've got a map on me. What does that mean? 
How can I get turned around when I've got a map and I can follow a road? That should be fine. Just keep an eye on where we are on the map. So we basically just looped up around the coast and then we're going to get very close by to, ah, the Cliff Edge Hotel or that campground that was mentioned. We possibly might be able to swing by there on the way. And then, hello, you are going to be a wolf. There we are. Welcome back from Skyrim, lads. And drop wolf meat times two, of course. Nothing too uh, surprising there. As we steer clear. What's a crawler? I don't like the sound of that. Is that that big praying mantis myolurk thing we saw in the trailer? And now we're coming to a crossroads. Would you mind just holding there for a second? Just, oh wait, never mind. What have you found? I hope you kill whatever it is. And it is... Gulpers! Hang on, let me come over here. I can totally handle this. Young Gulper. Yep, yeah, next one after that. And then, ooh, soft shell myolurks. Are you friends with the Gulpers? Attack you. Two hits on you. Kill the soft shell, Milo. Move over to the young gulper. <laughs> Dead. Nice. I love having Blitz. Blitz is good. Melee character in this game. If you've never played Melee in this game, Melee is like... I almost think it does need to be patched at some point. I think it is too powerful. Right. You stay there for just a second. There's a campground nearby that's got some ghouls in it I need to take care of. Like, yeah, I'm literally, like, just up the road from this little park that I could do. So I'm going to go here. If I can clear out the ghouls, that's the first stage of the quest from the Mad Woman. Which is obviously the quest I want to be doing. Hello! You do not stand a bloody chance against me. And you are a legendary feral ghoul reaver. Even though... <laughs> looks like I can just get you in one shot anyway. And... Yep, fine, you're going to go down in one hit. Ten times... Oh, sorry, twelve times, because I've got, uh... The, uh, the extra perk as well, the companion perk for this sort of thing. Troubleshooter's 10mm. Alright, but not spectacular. You're both going to go down in one hit. Yeah, I'm uh, surprised the game is not throwing tougher, higher level enemies at me. This is all a little bit simple so far. Yeah, in case you've never done it, um, if you get up to maximum uh, affinity with Deacon, you get an extra 20% on your sneak attack criticals. So I've got 10x on melee weapons from Ninja 3, and then a further 20% up to from 10 to 12x. Thanks to Deacon. This is interesting. This guy was just listed as a fog ghoul. Not a normal ghoul. Suggesting that maybe what was being implied here is that the fog turns people into ferals. But then radiation turns people into ferals too. So I'm not really sure I see the difference versus normal radiation there. But never mind. Possibly people are just being a little bit dramatic about what's effectively just radioactive fog. Anyway, let's nip back to this lad. There's no need to kind of uh, abandon him and leave him out here. Oh, but hello. What's this? Blight. I'll take some Blight, sure. Yet more legendary Feral Ghoul Reavers. Got a lot of legendaries showing up here, mind. And then, ow! One more. Just a basic Feral. Not to be worried about. To be honest, I'm immensely powerful, but I don't have much in the way of, uh, yeah, defensive strength. That's my weakness. And resilient 10mm. Oh! Well, that's new as well. 150 damage resistance while reloading. That's... that's interesting. Like, uh, on certain, like, close-range weapons, like shotguns, that can be very, very powerful indeed. Oh, stay away from the rad barrel, mind. Yeah, okay, we've got a whole bunch of brand new effects. In fact, I find it interesting that I've had basically nothing but brand new legendaries. I wonder if out here, you're not allowed to get normal legend... Actually, no, I know that's not true, because I've already had the troubleshooters 10mm pistol spawn. I've just been, presumably, ridiculously lucky to have, uh... Some of the new ones pop in. But yeah, new perks, new legendary effects. This isn't just new landmass. There's a lot of new stuff here. And then, oh, Children of Atom. We want to be friends, right? Stringing one more soul to the damnation, old man. Well, what have we here? Another rad worshipping lunatic. That's what. Your barbs do not harm me. I am shielded by my faith. How about bullets? Faith shield you against those too? All right, what's going on here exactly? Oh, whoa, let's just settle down, okay? You're right, waste of ammo. Do not sully this one with your blasphemy, old man. You, I suggest you go no further. Acadia is a nest of snakes, beasts that subvert the will of Adam. And what exactly did Acadia do that annoyed you so much? What's Acadia done to make you distrust them? They supply Far Harbor with the means to turn back Adam's holy fog. You'd do well to avoid such creatures, and instead, seek the only true master of this land. And that would be... Alright, 
I'm listening. Tell me about Adam. Tell you. Look around. You stride through his kingdom. A land blanketed beneath sacred fog. A land Adam has claimed for his children. And you may join our family if he deems you worthy. Are we going to ask about who he is by any chance? No? Worthy? What do I have to do to join? There is a ritual his children must perform. If you succeed, you will be rewarded with entrance into our family. Okay, sure, I've nothing better to do. But nonetheless, if you wish to test his favor, seek the nucleus. If you're done, we seek the nucleus. Okay, and where's that gonna be? Uh, here we are, down to the south of the island, the nucleus, overlooking what I'm assuming is a massive radioactive lake. Okay, interesting, that's a fair way from where we are. My Actually, we're heading south at the moment. Sorry, I didn't realize we'd uh, turn down and head down south, that's okay. In fact, actually, looking at the map, what I'm guessing is some of these areas are going to be impassable. Like, not all of this is going to necessarily be passable, um, just from the dark colouring. That feels like uh, what's potentially going to happen here. So, Or it's going to be like big slopes, so therefore it kind of is as good as impassable. Air's clearing, out of the rads. Good, barely took any rads there at all, to be honest. And this whole area is actually quite pretty when you come out of the fog. Very, very nice. Um, Stay here for a second, looting. And we've arrived. Acadia's already been watching us for a good spell. If you want to talk with them, just go inside. They'll be waiting for you. You need my help again. You come see me. Got a cabin just outside of Far Harbor. Good place to tool up your gear. Get some rest or get stinking drunk. <laughs> Did you just invite me back to his house to get drunk? Bloody hell, Longfellow. I think you're a bit old for me, to be honest. He has really come round to me very fast. First I remember, I was like, no, I'm done guiding people. I never want to guide people again. And then, actually, maybe buy me a bottle of whiskey. Maybe I'll consider it. Oh, yeah, actually, no, I'm totally on board. And by the way, come to my house and get drunk together, and then we'll go on a fishing trip. He really, really must be lonely. And indeed, ladies and gentlemen, on the question of don't you want to see what happens next, we are going to leave things off here and pick this up tomorrow. This is going to be every day for a little bit, I would say. So, more of this coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been the beginning of Fallout 4 Far Harbor. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Just got to weaken the base of this a little bit more. Yes! Yes! Good news, I'm protecting you! Alex Mason, the man who can literally run as fast as a speeding truck. This game is basically just badasses don't look at explosions the game, isn't it? Oh! Ho, 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 ho.